who's in the mood to echo prints? I know I am. Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. For the whole month of July, I looked at different kinds of wood that provide really vibrant colors into our natural dye practice. And I saved all of those chips to use them in some echo printing, which we looked at last week. Now we were using the exhaust chips. Today, I would like to look at how those compared to using the wood chips in their full strength form. And I want to try a different technique today. There's not going to be any heat involved. So grab yourself some chips and a piece of fiber and let's see what kind of cool prints we can make using wood as our color source. So sometime in the past year, I had the great fortune of going to a free workshop at the Fry Art Museum in Seattle. This is a wonderful museum that I go to more regularly to view the different shows that they're having, but also they have a great continuing education aspect and I've attended several classes there over the years. This particular class caught my attention because it was being taught by botanical colors and they were going to be providing a free environment to be doing some dye techniques. Now not only was it super cool to meet the owner of botanical colors since I'm local, it was also really fun to see another way in which to use natural color without heat. And what we did in that class, I'm gonna show you today. And that's because we used all kinds of really potent dye matter, including the different wood chip sources that we've looked at over the past week. So, I would like to show you what I made and then walk through making something with you again today. So you might be able to have yet another way to use these wood chips for echo printing. So this is what I made at the fry with botanical colors. And you can see that this was done with no heat source and just using some very potent dye material. Now, if I can remember what I used, I believe this brown was walnut and it was ground. The purple, you guessed it, logwood. We used cochineal, the whole insect, so you can see where the insects were. And then this, I believe, was either Coreopsis, I think it might have been Coreopsis petals, maybe marigold petals, I don't actually remember. And then we did have some Osage in here. And you can see there again is the walnut. All I did was lay them out and then fold it in half and then I bundled it. That's all. There was no heat involved in this. Now, since we're gonna be looking at the wood chips in particular, I will be looking to see what logwood and Osage will bring, as well as sapin wood, and we'll use some matter roots. What do you think the number one most important thing is here? Mordant. So in order for this to work really well and to stick around, you're gonna wanna pre-treat your fiber. And these particular pieces of cotton were pre-treated in the botanical colors recipe, which includes aluminum acetate, probably followed by a calcium carbonate soak. 
I had that process all through my Osage Orange video, so you can go back and watch that. But the basics are you're gonna weigh your fiber when it's dry, then you're going to do somewhere between five to 10% aluminum asset to the weight of fiber. You can dissolve that in hot water, put your fiber in for an hour or two, and then you can do a 2% calcium carbonate soak, or you can just, you know, forget that step if you don't want to do that. And I think having really well treated fiber with the mordant is part of the reason why this works so well. The second reason why is just because these are some of the strongest dye sources out there. And these are the dyes that a lot of the world uses as their natural dyers library of color. So go get your fiber ready. Mine's already ready. And then we're just gonna simply build it something kind of cool, bundle it up and go from there. So these are our supplies for today. I have two pieces of cotton that's been pre-treated with aluminum acetate. I have rubber bands for tying. I have a spray bottle just with water. And then I have my original chips. These are full strength chips, sapinwood, osage, logwood, and matter root, which we looked at over the past couple of weeks. And then this is my blend of exhaust chips. Now I use these for dye purposes and then we used them last week in the echo print that we did. So it's all mixed up in here. Although I made a little bit more of a thoughtful design last week this time i'm not going to do that so i'm just going to keep them all kind of mixed in so you can see the osage sap and wood matter and somewhere in here <laughs> is logwood i guess these are logwood bits yeah logwood okay so this is all we're going to need and we're going to start designing i'm going to do one with full strength one without and then I'll show you how very simple it is. No heat. So unlike last week where I attempted a sort of mandala design and a swirl, this time I am just going to be looking for an attempt to have a lot at the bottom, almost like an ombre effect, but with different dyes. So really heavy dyes, in one part and then slowly gradating up to where there's just wisps. I am also not going to be using any barrier this time like I did last time because I'm not as concerned about the dye printing on itself. I'm hoping that by putting most of the dye at the bottom where I'm gonna roll and then rolling it up and having there be more and more layers that it will create this effect. I don't know if it will, it doesn't really matter. I mostly am excited to see what the difference is between full strength and exhaust chips, but also that this is only about time and the power and magic of nature. We're not gonna need to heat it. Just gonna sit around for a few days and work its magic. Okay, I said I wasn't gonna use any barrier, but I am gonna use just a little bit because I would like one part of my design to try to say almost without any color at all. So I will put a piece of barrier just across that portion to try to protect it from accepting dye from the other parts of the fiber. And this is the same piece of plastic I used last week, which was recycled from some packaging that I had and I'm gonna just use it again. And that will be my semi-barrier just on one side. I'm gonna do it on this side and then roll actually from the other side. And hopefully that'll just 
add some additional protection there. So heavy on the dies in one part, lighter at this part. We'll see if we'll get some kind of gradation. Roll it up and tie it. So even though we're not gonna be using heat, we do need liquid in the form of water to help invite that color out. So now, before I wrap this, I'm actually going to spray it with water to get it damp so that the material and the dye matter is wet. And that'll be our conduit to bringing dye, I hope, to the fiber. one down. I sprayed it with a little extra water in there. I want to make sure that the moisture is in there, especially because I am using this plastic to try to barrier that bottom edge. So now let's build the same but using the full strength chips. You can already see the color coming just from spraying. These are from the full strength. So you know it's already working its magic on the fiber. Let's put the plastic on and bind it up. all wrapped up, bundled, and now we wait. I mentioned to you before that with natural dyes, natural color in general, time is your friend. So I'm going to let these sit for a few days, maybe after two or three days I might check to see, unravel a little bit, see what it looks like. Maybe if I have to add a little bit more water I will, or maybe it'll be just ready to unbundle and see what we get. So here we have the results. You can see that they both made a 
fairly strong prints. This one is the wood shavings that we used and exhausted over the course of the month of July and all of the dyes that we made and still incredible how much vivid color was able to come. And this again is with just cold water and time. So these sat about four or five days and really made a print. <laughs> and over here, you can see that these pieces are darker and stronger. The yellow is quite vivid of the Osage. And in essence, you really don't even need heat to extract color. Now, of course, because these two pieces are pre-treated with aluminum acetate, that certainly helps to attract the color more so. So that could have an impact that is positive if you want something stronger in terms of color saturation. But I'm telling you, if you have no access to heat for whatever reason, or you have a project that you want to do, let's say off site, and you want to play around with color, this is another option that you can use and get some pretty neat prints. So how fun was that? And wow, it's amazing to see how strong those wood chips are and their ability to create prints and color with no heat whatsoever. And also as compared to the exhaust, I mean, how many more times am I going to be blessed with the color that comes from those exhaust chips? It truly is a remarkable set of dye matter. So if you haven't already done so, please by all means check out the various forms of wood that we've looked at over the month of this past July. And know that you can buy all of these chips from Botanical Colors. If you're in the United States, you have access to all of it. For international, there are certain things they can't ship, so you'll have to go to their website and see. But hopefully, if you can't get it from Botanical Colors, wherever you are locally, you'll be able to get one of these types of dye plants. Now, you might have noticed that I am not on my balcony right now. I am in fact at the color farm. And the reason for that is because next week on Color Quest, we are going to be looking at what Amy and Max are growing this season and talking about a very special program that they have that I am lucky enough to be a part of, and that is the CSA program or Community Supported Agriculture Program. We are getting our first box that is a gift to us for supporting the farm and it's filled with some surprises including a fully dyed skein of wool yarn and a special batch of whatever flower it is that they have in abundance for the month of July that we get to use for dyeing. So join me next week as we open up that special box here and see what beautiful colors we are going to be able to make from this year's harvest at the color farm have a great week and i'll see you next friday <laughs> okay.